From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is the operator at the Explorers Club. Oh, good. Have you been able to... Sorry, Mr. Dollar, but I haven't been able to reach Mr. Donald Cronin for you. Well, hasn't he been there at all? He was in and out all morning, but he refused to answer any calls then. Since you first telephoned, he hasn't been back. Well, do you know when he will be back? No, I don't, sir. All right, then leave a message. I'll meet him there at the club. Is it very important that you see him, Mr. Dollar? It's important that I keep him from being murdered. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Inter-Allied Life Insurance Company, Crutchfield Square, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the curse of Kamashek matter. Expense account continued. <laughs> Item six, $9.80, train to New York, quick lunch and taxi to the Traders Bank and Trust Company. There I picked up the American Express traveler's checks that Eric Turnbull had left in my name, had left for expense money to take me to Egypt, to make sure his nephew Donald Cronin lived safely through an expedition to open the grave of the ancient pharaoh Kamashek. The bank teller's brief remark gave me something to think about. Mm, I'll, uh, I'll sign, Mr. Dollar? Mm, yep. Yes, now, let me check the amount for you just once more. All right. One thousand, two thousand, three thousand, thirty-five hundred, four, forty-five, forty-seven, forty-eight, and five thousand dollars even. Mm-hmm. Yes, here you are. Good, thanks. And as I'm sure Mr. Turnbull knows, this will close out this particular account completely. I thought about that remark a little later when it began to tie in with some other things I learned. Right now, item 780 cents cab fare to the Explorers Club. Donald had not yet returned, so I left another message for him, asking him to sit tight until he heard from me. And I meant sit tight. Because apparently, after the latest argument with his Uncle Eric, he was quite likely to hop off to Egypt on short notice. This I didn't want. As a matter of fact, at this point, I wasn't sure I approved of his expedition at all. Both his uncle and his girlfriend, Dorothy Harkness, had told me they thought his life was in danger. And each accused the other of plotting his murder. I was about to leave the Explorers Club when I was buttonholed by a short, kind of cute-looking old character in gray striped suit, tattersall vest, spats, believe it or not, and all but a monocle. Uh, I say there, old man. Uh, yes? If you'll pardon me, I believe I overheard you inquiring at the desk for Donald Cronin, didn't I? Oh, yes. Do you know him? Oh, I most certainly do. Uh, but excuse me, I'm Percival Thronghurst Scatterday. Mr. Scatterday, I'm Johnny Dollar. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Donald told me that he'd met you at his home. Uh, tell me, do you plan to accompany him on the ex expedition to Thebes? Well, uh, yes. Excellent, excellent. It should result, you know, in one of the most important archaeological finds of the century. Think of it. The tomb of Kamashek. Yes. Do you know where Donald is now? Treasures, artifacts, and that should put to shame the ones that were excavated from the tomb of Tutankhamun. Yes, I'm sure it will, but now... Uh, if history has told us the truth about Kamashek, uh, 18th dynasty, I believe... Well, that I wouldn't know, but now, uh, Mr. Scanner, today, it's important that I reach Donald Cronin just uh, as no, soon no, as... No, 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 now that I think of it, Kamashek... Kamashek was 12th dynasty. Oh, Mr. Scanaday, uh, if... Uh, but, but he couldn't be, because that was the era... Oh, yes, yes, I remember now. It was the 18th, the same period in which the great temple of Queen Hatshepsut was erected at Daya el-Bahari, at Thebes, of course. Uh, you've seen that, of course. No, I haven't. Oh, magnificent, enthralling. Now, look here, sir. Uh, but now, Mr. Dollar... I've got to reach Donald Cronin, so if you'll excuse me... Uh, Mr. Dollar, please, you say you are going with Donald. You do know about the curse of Kamashek. Or do you? Yes, yes, I've heard of it. Oh, then you'll certainly arrange not to be present at the opening of the sarcophagus. Why? Well, as I'm certain you know, all the preliminary work has been accomplished by the advance party, of course. So I understand. Uh, the antechamber of the tomb was opened over a month ago. So? Well, it simply means that as soon as Donald arrives, they will penetrate to the sepulchral chamber and the sarcophagus itself. Well? Uh, Mr. Dollar. It was engraved on the stone slab, barring the way to the last chamber, Mantak Ko Fore El, and so on. 
Oh, it's not supposed to be. Uh, the warning, my boy, the warning. That whosoever violate the tomb and desecrate the body of the noble pharaoh by contact therewith shall quickly die. <laughs> you don't believe in those things, do you? Mr. Dollar. As I always understood it. Those warnings were just put there to discourage thieves from robbing those old tombs. Uh, Mr. Dollar, I only ask that you remember what happened to those who violated the tomb of Tutankhamun. Oh, well, couldn't the deaths of the people who entered that tomb be due simply to coincidence? Or rather, things, uh, circumstances quite apart from their having done so? Of course, of course, they could, but were they? Mr. Dollar, I assure you that if it were not for the warning of the curse of Kamashek, I would be the first to want to enter that tomb. Instead, I have refused to go on the expedition at all. Uh, take care of Donald. Well, that's what I'm being hired to do. And of yourself, sir. Yeah, sure. Now, sorry, but I'm anxious to reach Donald, and you say you've seen him here at the club? Yes, only last evening. He was here making some of his final preparations. Well, do you know where he is now? Yes. Well, where? At his uncle's place in Stamford, Connecticut. You're sure? Uh, as sure as I am that you've not heeded my warning about the curse of Kamashek. But I beg you, Mr. Dollar, for the welfare of Donald Cronin and yourself. Uh, yeah, sure. Thanks. If this were a mystery story instead of an accounting of expenditures on a case, I'd tag Percy Scatterday as a prime suspect for whatever might happen later. Like the man who tries to throw you off his own trail by suggesting that somebody else is gunning for you. But I decided he was just an old fogey who'd been turned down on the Kamashek expedition was trying to justify his own shortcomings with the tales about the curse. But you know something? I was wrong. I should have listened to him a little more understandingly. <laughs> Item 8, 75 cents, taxi to the office of Harrison and Dillman and Company to see David Wilt, the man Eric Turnbull had named as his stockbroker. The reason? The remark the bank teller had made about closing out an account... As it turned out, my timing was perfect. Uh, sit down, sir, sit down. I'll be with you just as soon as I finish this phone call. Oh, sure, thanks. Hello. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, but someone just stepped into my office. If you'd rather be left alone, I'll... No, it's all right. Now, as I started to say, if you dispose of the gold metal mining stock, your holdings will be reduced to practically nothing. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Well, but, Mr... Yes, but Mr. Tur... Look, you sure you wouldn't rather I come back another time? Very well, very well. It's just that I hate to see what was once a very strong investment program. Very well, Mr. Turnbull, if you insist. Turnbull? Yes, yes. Goodbye. Now, now, sir. Eric Turnbull, Mr. Wilt? Oh, yes, but... Now, just a minute, sir. It was very remiss of me to mention a client's name in front of you, at least under the circumstances... Whatever I may have said on the phone just now was quite confidential. Yeah, I'm sure it was. I can only ask that you discreetly forget anything you may have heard. Not by a long shot. What's this? Who are you, sir? Dollar, I believe, the receptionist said. That's right, Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator. And that conversation told me just what I came here to try to charm you into telling me. Mr. Dollar, please remember this. That was entirely confidential. None of your business. Yeah, my credentials. Yeah? Well? Now, you remember something. So far as Eric Turnbull is concerned, my coming here is entirely confidential. None of his business. Goodbye, Mr. Wilt. So the wealthy Eric Turnbull wasn't so wealthy after all. Big investments in the stock market, he'd said. But they didn't look so big anymore. And the closing out of bank accounts. Item 930 cents, phone call to Dorothy Harkness. I just called to tell you, Dorothy, that if it'll be any satisfaction to you, I'm going to make the trip to Egypt. Oh, thank heaven. Then Donald will have some protection against the machinations of his uncle. Oh, gal, that sounds like a line out of an old melodrama. Oh, I know you don't believe me, Mr. Dollar, but I'm so sure that Eric Turnbull is plotting against Donald's life. You know something? I'm beginning to feel a little that way, too. Then you did believe me. In spite of the way you poo-pooed everything I said, are you, are you and Donald leaving together? I can't seem to find him. Do you know where he is? Tried the explorers? No, not there. Well, he'll surely call me before he leaves. Well, if he does, have him get in touch with me. Where, Mr. Dollar? Right now, I'm going out to Eric Turnbull's house. After that, I'll be back in Hartford. <laughs> Item 10, $7 even, train fare back to Stamford and taxi to the Turnbull residence in the hope that there I would find Donald Cronin, the real principal in this case, and the one person I hadn't yet talked to. But it was Eric Turnbull who met me at the door. Mr. Dollar, I'm glad to see you. Come in, come in. Have you seen my nephew, Donald? Well, no. Isn't he here? No. Nor is he at the Explorers Club. 
I've called him several times. I'm worried about him in his present frame of mind. I'm worried about him too, Mr. Turnbull, but not for the same because reason. Because of that girl, Dorothy Harkness, here, sir. No, that isn't what I meant. In his present frame of mind, he's likely to jump off on his flight to Egypt without... Look here, I wonder if he's with her. No, that much I do know. Oh, I wish to heaven he would call if anything happens if to him. If anything that... happens to him, you'd love it, wouldn't you? What? What did you say? I've done a little checking up on you, Mr. Turnbull, since I last talked to you. What do you mean? In a case as involved as this, it's necessary to check all the angles. Everything, everyone, even the man who hires you. Has that girl been poisoning your mind against me, too? Your banker, from whom I picked up the American Express checks, let it slip that your account is in pretty bad shape. Non-existent now, as a matter of fact. Go on, Mr. Dollar. And your stockbroker, quite inadvertently, made it all too plain that the big investments you told me about aren't so big after all. Mr. Dollar... All right, tie that in with the fact that if anything does happen to Donald, you'll come into his estate. You've said enough. But it's true, isn't it? You laid so much stress on Dorothy and the museum getting his 100,000 life insurance, but you're the one who would really benefit by his death. Dollar, you have talked with one banker, with one stockbroker. Why, in your snooping around, didn't you talk with the others who hold my accounts? Like who? Like, that's none of your business. But if what you are implying were true, why in heaven's name would I ever ask you to come in and protect my nephew? As a cover-up? I should knock you down with my bare fists, and believe me, my boy, I could do it. Now listen to me. I'm listening. If I didn't have any money, how could I afford to give you the 5000 in expense money, pay whatever other costs may be involved in your employment? And why do you suppose, in spite of this high-handed attitude of yours, I'm still begging you to stay on this case? See, Donald, Mr. Dollar, talk with him. You'll find that in spite of the angry scene between us, I'm concerned only with his welfare, that I want to protect him, that I want you to protect him. Wait, wait, that's Donald. Now, let me take it. Well, now, just a minute. Johnny Dollar. Oh, uh, Mr. Dollar, I was calling Mr. Turnbull. Mr. Scannady? Uh, yes, at the Explorers Club. Uh, Mr. Dollar, I've just talked to a couple of fellow members who saw him off. Saw him? Donald Cronin? Yes, last night. His plane has probably reached Cairo by now. Uh, fooled all of us, didn't he? Yeah. Thanks. Well, thought you'd want to... Well? Donald left for Egypt last night. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Then please. Please, I beg of you, go. In heaven's name, go to him. Stay with him. Protect him. For a long moment, Eric Turnbull simply stood there, sobbing pleading with his tear-filled eyes. And suddenly, I don't know why, I found that I believed him. I wish now that he'd been lying. Two lives might have been saved. Here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a flight into darkness, and when day has come, there's blood on the desert sands. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone who also wrote this week's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>